This is really bizarre. Bella picked up a puffer fish eight hours ago. She's clearly in a lot of distress. This week's stories from Bondi Vet. The snail bait is designed to kill. It kills snails and it kills dogs too. When you look at those sites, you've got to think she may be having either a mild seizure, she could be being poisoned by something, she could be eating something she shouldn't be. At the Bondi Referral Hospital Sash, Lisa is confronted with a rare emergency. One-year-old Bella has bitten a deadly puffer fish on the beach. Hey darling, can I pick you up? Right, okay, okay. All right. Okay, so Bella apparently picked up a puff puffer fish this morning. She's been vomiting all day. She's clearly in a lot of distress. Uh, she's very weak, she can't stand, she's got tremors. Puffer fish are extremely dangerous. I mean, usually an animal should be dead within 60 minutes of biting one. Within half an hour they have struggling to breathe and they need to be put on a ventilator. So this happened this morning. It's now been several hours and she's only starting to show these sorts of signs later. So it is quite atypical, but I am worried. This is really weird. I've never actually seen anything like this. I, I just want to make sure that she can breathe and ventilate properly because the worry is that the diaphragm can get paralysed and that's when they die. In reception, a quick search of the internet is not helping Bella's owner, Greg. Just did a check and it's um, the to toxin in, in puffer fish is actually, I think it's 1,200 times more powerful than cyanide. So obviously a little bit goes a long way for a, for a poor little dog that small. Oh, baby girl. Okay, okay. You're okay. You're okay. I know. This is really bizarre. Bella picked up a puffer fish eight hours ago. She should be dead right now. There's no treatment for puffer fish toxicity. Uh, there's no antidote at all. So Bella needs to be treated with a drip and pain relief and sedation. And then we need to watch her really closely to make sure she doesn't need to go on a ventilator. Just have a sleep again. Sorry to disturb you, sweetie. It's a rare case, and Lisa is searching for answers. What we do know about the toxin in puffer fish is that it's one of the most deadly toxins in the world. It's the same sort of toxin that's in blue-ringed octopuses. It's called uh, tetrodotoxin. So what it basically does is it shuts the nerves down all over the body. I must admit, I haven't actually ever seen anything quite like this. Bella's owner, Greg, is struggling to cope with the news. Worst case scenario with puffer fish toxicity is that it can affect their heart, so it can make the heart basically stop. Usually, if they're going to improve, whether they're on a ventilator or not, they will take, say, 24 to 36 hours to get better. She's still with us, so she's going well. Greg's now calling his wife, Carolyn. Little Bella may be running out of time. Oh, sweet. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Here you go. <laughs> Greg's wife Carolyn has arrived at Sash to comfort the critically ill Bella. Bella just turned one yesterday. So she's still a baby. And she's such a, a cheeky little creature. She, um, <laughs> she's like, oh, she's just cheeky. And she's a, a really cheeky little grin. It's amazing how little, you know, hairy creatures can just touch her heart. We don't know what's going to happen over the next few hours. So we'll just take it hour by hour, I think. Who's a sleepy one? It's also a long night for Lisa at Sash, as she keeps checking on Bella's condition. Can we see if you can stand these? Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. Uh, she's still not good. She still hasn't got control of her legs and her, and her head sort of swaying around. and. She's groaning, she still doesn't want to be touched, so the toxin is still in her system. But when Lisa puts the shaky Bella on the floor, 
she's showing plenty of courage. Emma, come here. This is pretty amazing. I mean, Bella's still fragile, but she's standing and she's even walking. Yes, she's wobbly, but she's walking. She's getting there. She's sort of just learning to use her legs again. She's still a bit wobbly. Oh my goodness, now I can pick you up and you don't quiver. Okay. Several days after biting a hey, poisonous puffer fish, Bella has made an extraordinary recovery. Look at you! <coughs> she's got her normal strength and she's bright and happy and running around, wagging her tail. And her mum and dad are going to be very excited to see her. She's doing the doodle wiggly wiggly wiggly. Carolyn and Bella's big sister Coco have arrived to take her home. <laughs> really, really lucky little dog because following the textbooks she should have been dead not within here. an hour, not with us. So it's almost a miracle. It's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Amanda and her son Jesse are extremely concerned about their beloved Jack Russell, Snoopy. I'm here because she's just recently started doing a lot of frothing in her mouth and really irritated and then she started throwing up. So tell me, what's, what's been going on with Snoopy? Um, last night, um, she just started, she's done it a couple of times, but lots of frothing and red lips and started to throw up and just was really ill afterwards. Is it the first time it's happened? Not, no, not the first time. We've actually got some footage of her when she, what, what, what was going on last night. Yeah. You want to see that? I'd love to. You got it, Jess? Yeah, I got it. You can see that saliva really building up. Mm. Okay. It's quite full on at times, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, it's not nice. Clearly something is affecting her body in a big way. Okay, let's have a look over here, Smith. So her mouth looks okay now. That's that's the interesting thing. The, the colour's fine and then you know she's producing just the right amount of saliva, she doesn't look dehydrated. So And her eyes, she kind of gets a really glazed look in her eyes. Mm -hmm. They look fine now too. The confusing thing for me right now is that Snoopy seems quite normal. Yeah, sure enough, that's fine as well. So Snoopy right now is a perfectly normal dog. When she has these episodes, she sounds like she's in pain. She's in, in a confused state. She's hyper salivating. She's pouring her mouth. Yeah. And the other interesting thing is there's two of them mm. and the other one doesn't, there's not, that's not going on. Yes, yeah, so that's, that's amazing. It's hard to know exactly what this could be, but when you look at those signs, you've got to think she may be having either a mild seizure, she could be being poisoned by something, she could be eating something she shouldn't be. Right now though, it is a complete mystery. There's something very unique to her that's happening. Yeah. I guess for me, the, the thing that I really need to do is actually see what happens in her backyard because yeah. something's happening yeah. and it's happening more and more often and it's getting more and more serious. Yeah. Chris is planning to check up on Snoopy later. He's hoping a home visit will provide vital answers to the little Jack Russell's bizarre attacks. So I do think we need to sort this out and actually sort it out now. Yeah. Hi Chris, oh. come out this way. <laughs> How are you? Oh, I'm good, thank you for coming. So who's... This is this Scrappy, is the little one. Scrappy and Snoopy. And Snoopy. Wow, they're similar. Yeah, sisters. There's a very good reason why I've essentially come to Amanda's backyard here, because this problem is happening with increasing severity, increasing frequency, and the worry is that if it happens again, and somehow Snoopy gets a bigger dose of whatever it is, it could kill her. Something within this area here yeah. could be causing what we're seeing with Snoopy. Yeah. But working it out isn't gonna be easy. I mean, I'd like to start by looking at the plants. Yes. So this is tiger grass here. Yeah. And then a mondo grass underneath. Now, neither of these are toxic. So even if they were chewing on them, it shouldn't be causing any sort of irritation, any sort of signs that we're seeing. Are you using any pesticides or any chemicals in the yard? Only um, seaweed spray, that's okay. all I use. Or chicken poo. That should be fine. Yep. Okay, wow. 
All right, so we've got some toadstools here. They'll cause vomiting, they'll cause some diarrhea, they'll cause a little bit of erratic behavior, but they generally don't cause the salivation. Maybe it's not such a big deal. Plus, you know, they haven't been disturbed. I'm pretty sure if they liked them, they wouldn't still be here. Yep. Okay. I was hoping that a walk around this yard would somehow show me a, a toxic plant that had been chewed on or maybe a chemical that had been left out. I'll be honest, this is a tough situation because I'm not really getting any closer to finding an answer for Amanda and for the family. What I do know though is that this problem is happening in this backyard. Really the only way to know for sure is to watch these dogs around the clock until Snoopy has one of those attacks. Okay. You staying up all night tonight? <laughs> I'm not, but a camera is. Okay, all right. So all the possibilities are really covered by this shot here. Right. We've got the pond. We've also got some of the toadstools over here. We've also got these fence lines here. Given our location, I do have a sneaking suspicion about what might be to blame. The video is going to tell us the truth. Okay, so fingers crossed. All right. Obviously don't want any disasters from these guys, <laughs> but I want some information. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. All right. It's yep. in your hands. Great. Hey, Amanda. Hi, Chris. But on his arrival, he is shocked to find the little Jack Russell right in the middle of one of her distressing attacks. I could see, yeah, she's drooling now. Yeah. There you go. Okay. There you go. Hey. She was, it was really, really frothy before yeah. and fluffy and she's been eating grass and... Yeah. Wow, you can see it's really bubbling out there now. Yeah. Well, Snoopy came in and she, she had froth coming out of her mouth and she was clawing trying to get it out. The interesting thing is that th this is the body's natural response to something that's that's really irritating that mouth. Yeah. Because you can see that it's trying to flush it out by producing all that saliva. Okay. I think, can you, can you get me a bucket of water? Sure. Is that all right? If Snoopy has taken on board something that is toxic, then naturally we have to try to remove it. The way I'm going to do it is by using a bucket of water and some swabs and hopefully clean her mouth right out. Her heart rate's quite high, so there's clearly something going on in her body right now that is causing her just to go a little bit haywire. What I want to do is just give her mouth a flush. You can see it just gums a little bit red, her tongue's quite red. And yeah. just seeing that bubbling saliva there, now that we've cleaned out her mouth, I'm gonna see what happens. Okay. So immediately, she looks more relaxed, doesn't she? Yeah, yep, and there's no drool. There's no drool. Yeah. So this is, I guess, probably good news because what we're seeing is the fact that if you can remove whatever it is that's irritating her mouth, yeah. straight away, she is okay, almost straight away. Okay. Okay? Yeah, okay. So it's a remarkable turnaround, and I'd imagine that was probably not a severe attack from... Yeah, no, not nearly as bad as I've seen it. Yeah. 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 See, the fact that we can resolve it so quickly by just cleaning a mouth out. Yeah. It's a pretty, pretty important clue. Yeah. Did that video work last night as far as you know? As far as I know. Yeah. Can we have a look at that? Sure. Okay. Let's do that. Okay. You okay? Yeah? Right, come on. I've got to say, I do have a nagging suspicion about what might be causing this, but it doesn't explain why one dog is affected and not the other. But the video should tell us either way. Yeah, there's not much happening. Mm. See these things here that look like they could be dog poos? I don't think they are because one just moved. Cane toads. The cane toads. So you've got cane toads hopping around your backyard at night and now uh, you've got Jack Russells. So we still don't really have our answer until the dogs come in. Oh no. <laughs> this is the greatest squeaky toy of all time. <laughs> oh no. Look at them. So you've got ah, you've got Scrappy there and Snoopy. But look who's the one that goes in hard. Snoopy. Snoopy. Scrappy is a bit of a bystander. Snoopy though is getting right in there. Cane toads have a poison in glands behind their shoulders, they can actually squirt that out or just excrete it onto their skin. And you see, watch Snoopy here, 
puts it in a mouth. They, they say that the effect of, of the poison is quite similar to marijuana, so sh she may actually be getting quite seriously high off these toads, and each night she goes out there and has her hit of it. The problem is, though, that to have that poison every night, it's going to start to, to really play havoc with the system. Today, Snoopy was quite lucky. It looked like she only had a very small dose of that poison. But now we have to find a way to wean her off her little addiction. And for that, I'll have to pull out a few tricks. What are you doing in there? Oh, <laughs> You're looking, looking for cane toads. I am, I'm looking for them. <laughs> I've got you rattled. I, I've looked every, absolutely, and come I can't on, come find on out. one. I've got some help for you here, okay. okay? Back in far north Queensland, Chris has returned to Amanda's house with a possible solution for Snoopy's deadly cane toad obsession. This yard doesn't naturally have cane toads. They're coming in from the outside world. Yep. So we've got to look along this fence here, because it looks pretty secure. We've got to look along the fence, see if there are any areas where they can get in under. And you can see here, let's see, yeah, we come to here, and see here, we've got gaps here. Oh. See, if I can get my fingers in there, the yeah. toes can get in there as well. Okay. So, oh. plenty of toes. Look. So, <laughs> true to form. Mm. It doesn't take long for Chris's right theory there. to be proven true. And you see where he was? Yeah. Right underneath the fence there. So, I reckon this is probably one of the highways they're using to get in and out. Okay. I'm not sure if this cane toad was in the wrong place at the wrong time or the right place at the right time because he's going to come in very handy in a second. So, nice. we need to block this up. Okay. This stuff's perfect because we'll still let little insects and, and bugs through, yeah. which should be here, but won't let cane toads. Okay, so if you feed this through here, stretch along on the ground and pop it through this part of the fence here. Okay, and then push our dirt up against it and some leaf litter. Okay. Yep. And then that little hole is patched. You're probably going to have about two, three, four of these along the fence line. Yep. Do each of those. Yep. And you'll stop the toads from getting in. Great. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, it looks good. Now, probably the biggest challenge of all. Chris may have <laughs> solved one problem, but now comes the biggest test. He needs to cure Snoopy's life-threatening cane toad obsession. The problem we've got, we've got two Jack Russells who are driven by instinct. And with Snoopy's case, she can't help herself but chase them, lick them, bite them, and each time she does that, she gets the dose of that poison. We need to make the thrill of the chase for her a lot less thrillful. Okay. And this is how we're going to do it. We're going to use an air horn. Now, conveniently, we already have a toad. <laughs> so if we put the toad on the ground, wait for Snoopy to appear, and if Snoopy comes up, and has a look at the toad, <coughs> looks away, and now she's wary because she's heard that sound. If she goes after it again, can she resist? No. Okay. So, <coughs> so we make that sound, get her attention, then we pick her up, we take her straight to the laundry and put her in there. So, you saw what happened there? Yep. She went to chase the cane toad. Yeah. You sound that horn. She stops. Yeah. Wonders why that horn sounded when she chased the cane toad. Keep on doing that. She makes the connection between that sound she doesn't like and chasing the toad. But as an added disincentive for her, she gets put in the laundry every single time she chases the toads. Okay. Sounds okay. good. Between the horn and the laundry, I think Snoopy's cane toad licking days are over. Thank you. All right. Good luck. Thank you so much. It's I really pleasure. appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, bye. I well, left this morning on my way to work at about 6.30 and got home tonight at about 7.30. And normally she's at the back door chomping at the bit to get, to get inside and um, found it a bit odd that she wasn't there. So I went around the back and I found her doing this. I wouldn't believe you'd actually need that muzzle. <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> Zena's owner is out of town, but his flatmate Gareth has rushed in with the trembling Rotty. She really is displaying the classical signs of a, of a snail bait poisoning and you do have to have to act pretty quickly on these guys because they, as you can see, their system just goes into overload 
Can't get up to it. You just keep calm there. They're being very good. If it gets too far, they can actually go into seizures. When that happens, it's very bad news. You've had some problems with neighbours, you suspect, before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's generally when, um, when she's kept outside and she might bark a bit, and I think they're a bit pissed and they try a bit of... I'm assuming the last time that she was poisoned. A phone hookup to the owner confirms the suspicion of poisoning. To me, it looks as though she's actually had something like a snail bait. Yeah. Um, so what I'm going to do right now is give her an injection of, of something called atropine, which is going to hopefully reverse a lot of those effects. Yeah. That, that's all right with you? Yeah, yeah, all right, no worries, mate. This one's a pleasant injection. The, um, the next ones won't be so pleasant. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually make her vomit. I want to get that stuff out of her stomach so she stops absorbing it, but I'm just trying to prevent her going to a seizure right now. This is a, what looks quite bizarre, but essentially it's a tablet that we're going to inject. Once this kicks in, she'll want to vomit. Now, yeah. it should be enough. I'll get this off. This is going to be a really tough moment for her because she's already feeling yeah. incredibly bad. Here we go. Come on, girl. Yeah, it does stink, doesn't it? You're in charge of that. Oh, type. great. <laughs> Lucky you. Can you pass me that tape as well? Zena's vomit is green. Chris now realises she swallowed snail bait containing a deadly poison called meteldehyde. There's no antidote for that. It's a little bit funny that the guy who owns the dog is a cop and so is a housemate and so are all these guys here. Is this dog being poisoned? The person that poisoned it doesn't know what he's messing oh, with, he's does he? trouble. The intravenous route just, just, she just doesn't seem to be responding to that and that's probably a result of the poisoning itself. Mm -hmm. What I'm actually going to do here looks a little bit strange, but it works. There's a great blood supply to the eye and that gets absorbed pretty quickly. Yep. It's a bit of an irritant though, mm -hmm. so she won't like this. Paul, Zena's owner, is now racing back to Bondi to be by her side. Once you get to know her, she's the most beautiful, friendly, lovely natured dog. She's an absolute, she thinks she's human. She's a baby. <laughs> yeah, Paul? Yeah, mate. Hey, mate. What I'm proposing is that we, we take her over to the emergency centre for the simple fact she's going to probably need to be anaesthetised and also monitored throughout the night. Um, and she also needs something called a, a, a gastric lavage. Zena needs her stomach pumped urgently to purge the toxin from her system. I'm assuming she's actually been given a fair sized bait there. At the moment it's, it's touch and go. The seriously ill Rottweiler now needs to be transferred to the clinic's emergency referral hospital, SASH. Yeah, we'll do that in here. She's, she's warm enough for that. It's alright. Zena is in a critical condition. How are you going? You've got Zena. Just to fill you in, Lisa. She came in about an hour and a half ago. Yeah. And she was tremoring and, and basically in a fair bit of distress. Mm -hmm. So just putting both tubes in. We're trying to fill up the stomach with warm water and then basically empty it out. So trying to physically remove all of the toxin from her stomach. The thing I'm most mindful of at the moment is the potential for brain damage. Uh, we saw Zena's temperature shoot through the roof to above 40 degrees. Now, if it goes over 41 or heaven forbid 42, then there's a very real risk of brain damage. The gastric tube has been removed and now the vets can only wait and hope. What we're looking for over the next few hours is basically a reduction in the amount of tremoring she has. We want her whole nervous yeah. system to calm down. The devastated owner finally arrives. We just say that we can go doing everything we can. Paul is a Sydney policeman, and he's certain this has been an act of pure malice. If I've got a beef with me and a bit of beef with something, 
but to, to kill a dog, to, to try to kill a dog, which I would have done if, if we weren't home. The next few hours pretty much decide Zena's future. If she can metabolize the toxin that's in her system, keep that temperature down, and begin to show some significant signs of improvement, then the future looks good. If not, if she continues to tremor, if she goes into seizure, then it's bad news. It's very bad news. Lisa. Good, how are you? Good, thank you. You must better. be happy. A lot better. A yeah, lot better come see her. Yeah. You'll be over the moon. At the emergency hospital, Zena has made it through the night. Oh, yeah, look at you wearing your tail. That tail's going. Oh. So she'll still be quite groggy yeah, today and even probably into tomorrow. Just it's been a close call. Zena could have suffered severe brain damage, but remarkably, she's okay. And she looks so normal now. Yeah. To see her lying there last night broke my heart, and, um, but to see her again today would complete turnaround. I can't describe it ecstatic, relieved. <laughs> <laughs> Don't feel camera shy now. Yeah, you always That's want to be the centre of attention. <laughs> Back at home, Zena is showing no signs of her snail bait ordeal. I'm ecstatic that she's here now, and it uh, looks like we'll be moving out soon. Um, I just can't take the risk that something like this is going to happen again. But I'm happy that, I'm so happy that she's here now. <laughs> Sorry, I saw you there. Three month old Archie is suffering severe convulsions. So what's happened? You just come home and he's been like this? Yeah. The Labrador puppy is confused and frightened. Have you got any baits or anything in your backyard? Not that I know of, no. Yeah. Has he vomited at all? Not that I know of, no. Okay, I'll take him through straight away. We just need to see what's in his stomach, because to me this looks like a poisoning, like he's taken on board some sort of toxin. We just get a thermometer. I'm just worried if he has ingested something and he could be overheating and going into some sort of hypothermia. Yeah, so it's 41.3 degrees, so he's very hot. So can we get a cool bag of fluids, Neil? Yeah. Hey, buddy, just gonna settle down, mate. I know, I know what's going on, okay? You just keep coming. Mate. So, before we even get the fluids in, I'm just gonna give him uh, something to make him vomit straight away. Because the longer this toxin, or what I think is a toxin, sits in his stomach, the worse off he's gonna be. Um, do you know how long you were out? Um, we all left home about quarter to eight this morning yep. for school and work. Archie's owner, Danielle, arrived home early after she had an unexpected trip to the dentist. I'm grateful that I had to leave work and get this tooth taken out in an emergency and um, otherwise I wouldn't have been home until after four o'clock this afternoon. By four o'clock, Archie would have been dead. Looking at the total hold over Archie's body that that poison has right now, if it gets much more serious, he'll die. This will target his brain and actually make him vomit, and vomit quite thoroughly. Hopefully the result is that we remove whatever is in his stomach as much as we can. For a young puppy that's already immature and, and fragile, it's really damaging. Looks like a snail bait. So that's green, so this looks like a snail bait, guys. Snail bait is designed to kill. It kills snails and it kills dogs too. It works by causing the nervous system to go haywire. When Archie takes on huge amounts of it like he has, it's like hooking him up to electricity and turning up the voltage. And there's no antidote. Forty-two five. Forty-two five. so we're up again. 
means temperature's gone from 41.3 to 42.5. It's going the wrong way, we need to bring it down. The only way you can do that is through giving cool fluids, cool towels, fans, cold water enemas, and stop the convulsions. The muscle contractions are right now what's putting that temperature quite high. Okay, mate, you just gotta keep coming. You do some things to you, you're not gonna like, all right? But if you keep calm, you're gonna come out the other side. Just because he's vulnerable doesn't mean that Archie's out of danger here. Because there's no antidote, the treatment is all about getting rid of that toxin out of their body as quickly as you can. And you just hope they stay alive long enough. Watch, 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 watch. Unless we can get him through the next hour, then I'm not going to be confident. Just stick with us. Just stick with us, alright? This is really no different to a stomach pump. We're putting fluid in to get fluid out, but when that fluid comes out, it brings with it that snail bait. That's the critical part of this whole procedure. Chris has now anaesthetised Archie, so he can flush the poison out of the Labrador system. Oh. It's, it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. It just keeps on coming. That's, that's what I'm finding so incredible, is that Archie's not a big dog, but, jeez, he went at this big, didn't he? Once I'm confident that I've actually got all the toxin out, I'm going to put some charcoal down through the same stomach tube. That's going to absorb any remaining toxin that's sticking to the intestinal wall. From there, we turn everything off and we wait. with you, buddy. Hey, do you remember us? Hmm? There's no food here. No. What we don't want is that uncontrollable tremoring, which we're not getting right now. This is good. I'm happy with this. This is good. Look, he's been through a lot. He's going to be exhausted. So he'll stay tonight. No, um, I suppose if he's too tired, the kids can't see him. Well, look, the kids can come in and see if you want. He'll only pick up from here, won't he? Hopefully. Just the, the liver's the only worry I have, and we're going to test for that. But All right. It's tricky because right now everyone's relaxing and going, geez, that was close. But was it close, or are we just beginning to see the signs of something more serious in the form of liver damage and even liver failure? Bye-bye. We'll see you in a while. Okay. Blood tests need to be taken later today to find out if Archie has suffered any long-term organ damage. Rest up, and you'll feel a lot better. And don't get too excited, but someone's here to see you. Chris is happy enough with Archie's progress to allow his family to visit. But the young dog is still fragile. Your little puppy's been through a lot today. He's still very sick though, and he's still very frightened about what's happened to him and, and what's going to happen to him. So be really gentle with him and don't make any loud noise and just walk him very quietly and, and just keep calm. I love him so much. He's like another brother. <laughs> he's just so special. Let's chat in the morning and, and fingers crossed his, his liver's okay and then he can push on through. Okay, thank okay. you for everything. That's all right. No worries at all. Very lucky. Thank you. Try to relax tonight. Okay, we're doing everything we can for him. Thank you. Bye bye. All right. There is one more important test Chris needs to perform on Archie. So this blood in here is all about checking for the organ damage. It's been through a lot. How much his organs were affected during that two hours of chaos? We've got to find out. Are you, are, are you ready for food? If I put the food down, you're actually going to eat it. Are you sure? I, th I think I think you might be sure. Archie's appetite is back after his snail bait ordeal, and so are his test results. It's fine. No. Yeah, serious. No way. Absolutely fine. Wow, amazing. Yeah. What a lucky dog. The results are what we really weren't brave enough to hope for. His liver's fine, so it's managed to cop all that abuse it's been through, come out the other side and not be showing any serious signs of damage. Do you, do you want to go, go home before you eat the bowl? Archie, you're setting a bit of a pace there. 
Look who's here. Archie! A happy Archie is back at home and seemingly oblivious to his near-death experience. He'll probably end up sleeping in the bed with one of us. Yeah, just unconditional love. Danielle has finally tracked down the snail bait that nearly killed Archie. It had been spread over the lawn at the back of their house. I don't know where it's come from. And to see that there's still that much there, I can still see something too. So the packet's here as well. So the whole box has been thrown over here. It's all oh, through it's here. It's everywhere. Yeah. I'd hose it in and then I'd put dirt over the top. Okay. And try to and keep them inside until you can really be sure that that's it's gone. been rinsed out. After all we've been through, where that snail bait came from may be a mystery. But the most important thing is that Archie's alive, he's happy, and the kids are over the moon. Incredible. Oh, better. It's 9 p.m. and Chris is responding to an emergency call. Just come straight through, guys. Little Luku has suddenly lost the use of her back legs. <laughs> Debbie and her son Jonas noticed Luku starting to stumble a couple of hours ago. All right, she's definitely got some weakness there. You can see she's propping out, just trying yeah. to support herself. Yeah, have you got what you pulled off her? There are three different types of ticks that attack animals. The most dangerous is the paralysis tick that injects toxin straight into the bloodstream. The hallmark of a paralysis tick is the fact they have two lighter coloured legs that are shorter, which are the middle pair, and you can see these ones are lighter coloured and they're shorter. So it is a paralysis tick. You can see the size of that crater. That, that tick's actually been there for quite a while. Yeah. See how she's just doing a little bit of a gagging? It almost looks like she's trying to vomit. That's just a sign that she's... She's just starting to feel the effects of that toxin, of that tick toxin around her throat. Tick paralysis works forward from the hind legs to the head. It's now reached Luku's chest, putting her in the danger zone. Dogs obviously don't pass away from ticks from, from having weak back legs. It's when their breathing becomes paralysed and they lose the ability to, to clear their throat and they can actually be at risk of, of vomiting and then, then inhaling it. The antitoxin is being administered, but it's still a race against time. If I had to say what my biggest worry with Luku was right now, it'd be aspiration pneumonia. It's the number one killer of dogs with tick paralysis for a reason. It just shuts down their ability to breathe and they can't survive that. I'm just looking for any dramatic changes in her breathing or her heart rate. For Luku, it must be an incredibly weird, but also scary feeling to all of a sudden lose control of your body, to not be able to move your back legs and then not be able to breathe, to start to asphyxiate. And that's what she's going through right now. The antitoxin is now fighting the poison in Luku's system, but it will take several hours before Chris can be sure that it's been successful. Yeah, she's not air conditioned. No. That's probably a response to the toxin. Yeah. If she makes an attempt to vomit and actually doesn't bring it up properly and then takes a big deep breath inwards, then that vomit goes straight into her lungs and from there, she can't breathe through that, and it could be the end of it. Now, Luku, can you feel another tick on you? If so, you've got to tell us where it is. Otherwise, we've got to spray you. We've got to spray you, don't we? Yeah. Okay. Luku is being given a spray treatment to make sure there's no more paralysis ticks lurking in her fur. Yeah, you look a bit rough there, Luku, don't you? Huh? Maybe tell her the guy in the blue shirt isn't all bad and she doesn't need to be shaking like that. I think she knows that already. They, <laughs> they suss people out pretty quickly, aren't they? She knows you're on her team. She's on Team Luku. I hope so. Even though I've given Luku that antitoxin, it doesn't mean that everything's going to be OK. Oh, she's shaking. They can still get worse for 24 hours after you remove the tick. The antitoxin helps but it's not a cure straight away. All right. Okay. I'll leave it with you. Thanks no so much. Thank you. Okay. No worries. Even though Debbie has left and has said goodnight, I just know she'll go home and she won't sleep. She'll be sitting by the phone waiting, hoping that it doesn't ring, because she knows that if the phone rings, it's not going to be good news. Is that miss? It's now 1.30 in the morning. 
Chris and Erin will take turns keeping an eye on Luku. I know it's not the most comfortable sleeping position. Yeah, I know. But it helps you breathe. Mm -hmm. The worry I have is if she has a vomit and we're not watching. If she does, if that goes into her lungs, she pretty much has no chance. I'm not going to be able to sleep if she's like this, so... I'll take first watch. How about that? All right. Two hours on, two hours off. I'll see you in two hours. I'll be here, mm -hmm. looking at her, I'm and sure she'll be here, you. looking at me. <laughs> All right, lights. Yeah. See ya. Sleep well. I'll try. <laughs> How is she? Yeah, go have a look for yourself. You'll see. Next morning, after catching up on some much-needed sleep, Chris is back at the clinic to check up on his tick patient, Luku. Hello, Luku. Um, you're walking. The lucky survivor's legs are still wobbly, but definitely working. Luku's gone loco. <laughs> yeah. There are, however, some telltale signs of the toxin still attacking her system. Luku can't go home for another 24 hours, even though she looks so good. It's because her gag reflex, that ability to stop herself from inhaling a food, still isn't strong enough. Still not much of a gag there, is there? Huh? If she was to have a meal right now, there'd be a decent chance that it'd end up in her lungs and that, that could kill her. You know what, though? You need to rest. You mightn't think it, but you actually do need to rest. You can't take on the world right now. Luku, can you eat safely, huh? You ready? Well, it's gone. So there was meant to be some suspense there, but you, you just you swallowed it. At Bondi, tick patient Luku is now eating without any problems. Lick clean. And has convinced Chris she's ready to go home. There you go. Hello, Luku. Hello, darling. Oh, you're better. Oh, sweetness. All four legs in full working order. That's the way we like you. You're going to get in one more lick? No licks? You just want to go, don't you? I thought so. See you, Debbie. <laughs> Thanks a lot. That's See all right. Later. No problem. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I'm sure she'll remember. Oh, that's what they all say. <sighs> Rejection, it's, it's a hard one to take. If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way.